Hey everyone, we're going to go over materials and logics today. We're not going to cover anything in, in detail, we're just going to cover how to store logics within a material and how to drive properties on a material. This is a request from Leon, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to create a material and talk about how materials work. So I'll do PBS Metallic, drag this inspector to the side. This isn't a full material. Um, Tutorial. This is just uh, how materials work with logics. On this object, you'll see that there's a sphere. It's called PBS Metallic, and it has a component called PBS Metallic within it. Beneath that, there's a mesh render and a sphere mesh, exactly as if you would spawn a regular sphere. There's also a bunch of special components down here, like asset proxy material, reference proxy, and material apply policy which control how the material is uh, usable as an object for the material gun and also for the inspector interfaces. The key thing to note here is that the PBS metallic material is just a component. If we want to have a material within a logic setup on an avatar object, we can just create PBS metallic or PBS whatever you want or any of the other shaders within the object and that will keep the material on the object and so when you save it, it won't disappear. We're going to close this inspector and we're going to remove this orb. We do not need it. Now we're going to make a cube. Inspect that cube. And at the bottom of the component list here, we're going to add a new component. Assets, procedural, no, no, assets, materials, PBS metallic. Now we've created our own metallic material on the box, which is owned by the box. And we can put that into the mesh renderer for the box. And you'll see this now says PBS metallic on box. And that means that material is now being self-driven and, and, and referenced to by everything within this box. There's no external references here. You can, however, grab a reference to this material with the material tooltip. These two are tied together. This is a reference and this is the actual material because of the PBS metallic reference here, uh, component there. If we edit this material and set the albedo color to red, you'll see the one on the box also gets colored red. Let's drive some of these properties with logics so that we can pack it away and show you how to re um, save it properly. So here we have the interface for the material and we're going to spawn a couple of nodes to make it change color every second. So here's a timer node. We're going to put one into there. And then we're going to need math, random, random hue. And then we're going to need actions, right. This goes here to initiate the right. We're writing the random value. This can go down here to be a bit tidier. And then we're writing this value to albedo color. Now every second it's changing color. We're done with logic, so we're now gonna pack this up by making a new child object by box, new child, rename the child to, oh dear. Logics, pack mode, Pack the logics, clear the inspector. Sorry, the interface, close that, close the inspector. You now see we've got a cube that is changing color every second. Also the material reference on my tool shelf is also changing color. If I go ahead and save this cube to my inventory, that's done. And delete the cube here you'll see that this material reference instantly stops changing color because the logic has gone away with it and it's not on this material ball, it's on the object. So now if I take this material, uh, put it to one side, spawn the cube, you'll see the cube is now changing colors as because the logic is in the cube, but this isn't because this is now a separate reference. If you wanted to do that, you'd have to grab a new reference. That's how you put materials um, on, on objects and then put logics on those objects to control the material, have it safe and uh, retrievable without losing references to the material. I hope that helps you out, Liam. 
Let me know what you think.